are welcome to Grizzly Tales for Gruesome Kids. A series of cautionary tales for lovers of squeam. I call this tale Monty's Python. In it, I will show you how whole species of animals, including boys and girls, can easily become extinct. <laughs> Monty was a bad boy. He liked to make his sister scream by dropping scorpions down the back of her neck. Scorpion! Ah! It's a carrot, you baby. He put worms in her bed. Ah! Licorice, Dumbo. And slugs in her cereal. Ugh, you like slugs. I'm not an idiot, Monty. You've done this too many times. I know they're not slugs. What are they really? Slugs. <laughs> ah! Marshmallow chunks, you big girl. <laughs> A cruel desire to make his sister scream made Monty buy a snake. He knew she wouldn't like it. Oh, my God! Take it away! What is it? It's my new pet python called Sister Eater. Its jaws are so huge, it could fit all of you inside and still have room for pudding. Show her, Sister Eater. So the python showed her. Ah! Oh, what are you screaming at now? A mouse just ran out of its mouth. It was probably escaping from its stomach. Snakes eat mice, you know. But it was alive. Of course it was. They only like things when they're wiggling. Ah! Monty was going to have endless hours of fun with his sister. For the next few days, he tortured her round the clock. Wakey, wakey, mice cup of tea in bed. You've left the tea bag in. <laughs> Right, sit down. I've made you breakfast to say sorry. What is it? It's a boiled mouse. Ah! Look out, there's a mouse in the house. Ah! Never fear, Sister Eater's here. Ah! Have a mice day now. After a few days, however, things started to go wrong for Monty. Because he was feeding his python so many mice, the snake started to grow. And once it had grown, little mice no longer satisfied its massive hunger. The python's stomach grumbled like a drain and demanded something bigger. So Monty introduced the python to his sister's pet parrot. Sit. Polly, sister eater. Sister eater, Polly. Who's a tasty boy, then? But eating parrot made the snake grow again, which meant that Monty had to find something even larger to feed it on. Cuddles. Oh, cuddles. Playtime. Oh, no. Why is Sister Eater curled up in front of the fire? He's just eaten. And where's my pussycat, Cuddles? You haven't. Meow. I have. After the cat, ah! it was his sister's dog. After the dog, it was a small horse. Oh, Monty, have you seen my best friend Miranda? Miranda! Miranda! She's still in the saddle. Ah! And after the horse, well, Monty couldn't think of anything bigger to feed his pet python. Except maybe his sister. Ah! Don't you dare! Yelled his mother. You're quite right. There'd be no fun in it. If it ate my sister, who would watch and scream? 
Monty's python was now so big that supersized food was impossible to find. So Monty took it to the zoo. Finally admitting defeat, eh, loser? You should have given it to the zoo to look after ages ago. I'm not giving it to the zoo. I'm looking for something bigger to feed it on. But the elephant was a non-starter. The crocodile had the snake out toothed. And the giraffe was game to give it a go, but never really looked like fitting in. Thanks, but it's never going to work. On his way home, Monty realised that the problem was now much bigger than he could handle. He'd fed his pet python too many live animals, and now he was the owner of the biggest, hungriest snake in the world. Not only that, but Monty's python was starting to look at Monty with a hungry eye. You can't throw it away. I thought you didn't like it. I don't, but you can't put an animal in the bin just because it's too big. Then I shan't, said Monty. I shall chop it in half with a train. But the trains weren't running that day. Leaves on the line. Monty tried slicing it up with a combine harvester, but the <laughs> blades just tickled. He even tried snapping it like a rubber band, but the aeroplane wasn't strong enough. So he flushed it down the loo instead. The snake, however, was too big to flush, which meant that Monty couldn't go to the loo. Are you scared of being bitten? No, he said. But he was. <laughs> You'll just have to cross your legs for the rest of your whole life. <laughs> You're enjoying this, aren't you? Yes, because you'll have to go sometime, and when you do, Sister Eater will burst out of the bowl and bite your winkle off. <laughs> she was not wrong. On the fourth night, Monty could not keep his legs crossed any longer, and he dashed into the smallest room in the house. Oh. Ah! Where the biggest snake in the world was waiting to grab him. It dragged him into the sewers and dumped him on a ledge with a load of glum bones. What's the matter with you lot? Look, down there, there's a way out. Nobody seemed that pleased. Instead, a small girl pointed to something Monty hadn't seen. The wall was lined with watching animals. Crocodiles, spiders, snapping turtles, crabs, rats, snakes and scorpions. This is, this our, is our place. place, they said. Your pets now. Are those all your pets? He asked. That you got bored with and, and flushed down the loo? Right, I'm off and he ran towards the light. You can't keep me here, he screamed, splashing through the water. Oh! You can run if you like, said Sister Eater, but I'm so hungry, I might just bite. Go on, Monty, make my day. So Monty stayed put, like a good, obedient little pet. Go on, Monty, fetch. And he's still down there now. You don't believe me? Put your head in the loo and listen. Help! <laughs>